Hello there. I'm going to tie a uh, traditional bend back streamer. This is a lightweight streamer meant to fish hook point up in shallow water, especially over grass. I don't know if you can see how the uh, the shank goes along here and the eye the shank is bent just before the eye down and what that does is is it helps change the center of gravity for the hook and help it to turn over I say help because there's a couple factors that go into it one is the wing and the wing material which is tied over the point and that kind of when the fly hits the water it'll parachute down and in conjunction with the actually it would just do it by itself the, the wing on top in fact the uh, bend backs I tie today especially with the more modern hooks that aren't as soft uh, stainless steel um, and would break if you bend them uh, I just tie the wing on the standard hook like that and it turns it over fine but in this case uh, just for tradition I'm going to do a regular bend back where you actually bend the hook back it's a great minnow imitation, good for fishing uh, shallow water, spooky fish, it lands very lightly. I like the chenille body for the standard pattern, it, help, it absorbs water and also helps it keel properly. You can use other materials for the body such as uh, braid, sparkle braid or um, chenille, uh, cactus chenille, stuff like that. Like I said, this is a standard uh, saltwater hook. Well, I say it's standard. It's actually the old uh, Mustad stainless steel hook. This is a size one aught. Um, when you bend these hooks, you really don't have to bend them much. A uh, common mistake most people make is to bend it too far back from the hook eye and then to bend it on way too steep of an angle that just uh, you know it's just not good it messes up your hook hook point angle and probably messes with the steel too I usually come about one hook eye length back from the back of the hook eye I like using these uh, little miniature uh, crescent wrench to do it it holds the hook nice and flat and square and I'll come back about like I said about one one hook eye length back from the hook eye and then just grip it holding this twist thing tight and stick your thumb in here brace it with your index finger on the bottom and then just kind of bend it a little bit it's just a little bend go much more I wouldn't go more than that and that's large enough to tie your materials in but not so big where you have a huge head to have to deal with and make the fly look awkward and uh, shorten up your body length also so that works good right there I like to start my thread right where the hook is bent that way it gives me a good a quick reference Take it to over the hook barb. Tying your chenille again. I like the uh, Antron chenille from Cascade. Has a little sparkle. It's a good fluffy chenille. This is the uh, six millimeter size.
Now if you wanted the same lightweight fly but to have it sink a little bit faster, uh, you could tie in a little strip of lead on top of here, preferably back here, even anywhere along here actually would work just fine. Tie it off with three three wraps. Pull tight on your in the direction of your wrap with your chenille, and then pull back the opposite way with your thread to make sure it's good and tight. And that'll hold it in place while you trim it, and then pick off some of your fibers and tie down those little threads. You can turn your vise over. If you have a rotary vise, or mine's not set up for rotary, so I just take it out and flip it over. <clears throat> like I said, bucktail is the preferable, uh, preferable material for this fly, but I like uh, putting a little small bunch of uh, kinky fiber. This kinky fiber is pretty close to the consistency of bucktail, but it's synthetic and translucent. Um, and I just like uh, putting this in as an underwing. Just a little small bunch of it. Trim the ends off. squared and then uh, make it over the material and under the material basically you're wrapping it over the material first just to kind of corral it in and then you pull it down to the top of the hook shank like that and then <clears throat> what I'm doing is I'm putting my finger on your side of the fly because that's the way I'm wrapping and then that wrapping pressure will, will take and turn that wing over. So I'm putting my finger finger on that side and pulling tight on the thread. And that locks it in on top of the hook. And then I just finish tying down to the ends right there at the back of the hook eye. And I'll uh, I just trim the wing back here. Just about one shank length past the hook bend and then kind of tapered a little bit like that and I'll tie in a little flash for this olive one I like the red a little red crystal flash a few strands of that take that flash wrap it around the thread locks it in and then I take and separate it and pull it on each side of the wing like this. <clears throat> I'm take a nice northern dyed northern bucktail for a topping. Cut off a bunch. A little bit smaller than the thickness of your body, and then just grab the tips. That'll be long hairs, and then loosely on this end, just kind of pull these out. And then what you can do is re-line them up with your bunch like this. And go ahead and grab the tips and then tease out any shorter ones. Yeah, you waste a little bit of material, but that's just how bucktail is. They're cheap. And you get a nice little bunch going there. <sighs> Measure it where it's longer than 
hold it in the front and measure it where it's longer than your, your underwing by a little bit and then note that your fingers at the front of your thread head and that's where you're going to trim your bucktail switch hands at that point and at your mark and then go ahead and cut it like that do the same wrap as you did for your underwing holding it up off of the tie-in point go over over and under and over again and that, that just corrals it in and keeps it separated from uh, going down on the side your, uh, your underwing kind of snug it down hold it pull it tight make two or three wraps kind of make sure that wings up on top look at it from both sides like that and then if you have any fibers like I do in this case hanging over the hook eye you want to trim those back hold your wing tightly and go over your ends don't worry about that little bit sticking out that's going to get wrapped over when we go back with our flash <clears throat> I like to top it with a little black crystal flash dark brown I think it started out black it looks more like dark brown now I don't know how it got faded but same thing fold it over your thread like this right in the middle you know line up your ends hold it up here and pull it back and wrap up and that flash will help bridge that little step on the end of your bucktail and now in this case keep it together because it's going to be your topping and hold this down and wrap all the way back down the top of your head right to your body and a face there go ahead and untwist your thread flatten it out and And what I'm doing is I'm just whip finishing. I'm filling in that little. They have like a little swale in the top middle of the head. I usually like trimming this crystal flash at different lengths. Just a little longer than the bucktail. And you can kind of brush through it with your dog brush. I have a little dog brush here. It kind of helps bring the materials together. Like so. Now you could put an eye on it or not. You can just uh, finish this with a little head cement. Here's a little Sally Hansen's hard as nails. Coat the thread wraps. If you paint the eye, it's especially good to uh, to do this. That way, the paint doesn't. It's kind of like a thread sealer, so your paint doesn't go absorbing down into your thread. And this is a pretty basic little bend back. Got a little olive underwing down in there, kind of translucent, and a little brown overwing. It goes together and flows real nicely in the water. Pulse is good. And uh, it's a great old fly. Okay, my friends, have a good one. Bye.